Hello? Okay, I think I'm gonna get started. Uh, it's better to finish on time uh, or early on than not finish at all. So, um, for those of you who now know me, uh, my name is Alejandro Hernandez, and um, I am currently the Yocto project tech lead at Silinks. Uh, and uh, I've been a Yocto developer for a few years now, and I'm gonna present to you this uh, one build to rule them all, building free Artos and Linux using the Yocto project. There's a Tolkien reference there, of course. So, the, <clears throat> the outline of this presentation, I divided it in three parts, basically. Uh, the first is like, uh, like a very small introduction on why this is important. Uh, talking about heterogeneous systems, uh, R RTOS as Linux and bare metal applications and how their workflows differ. And there's uh, the second part of the, uh, the presentation is gonna be on the open embedded development uh, that happened to, to, for this to be achievable. Um, <clears throat> free Artos on, on Yacht, on the Yachta project, what, the, what is new live in LibGloss, uh, how that's, that's wired into, into BitBake, and then the last, uh, then actually creating a layer, Meta Free Artos, that can be used, right? Um, this layer has a, a class, recipes, what's the BSP, what's an application, um, how can we run it on QMU for testing, and actually how can you, we, how can we run automated tests on, on these applications using the open embedded infrastructure that already exists. Um, and the third part of it, it's like actually how can we achieve one build to rule them all, uh, which is where I'm gonna touch on concept of multi-config builds and multi-config dependencies. <clears throat> so first of all, um, heterogeneous devices. Um, I think there's uh, there, more and more every day we're seeing devices that have a myriad of different architectures inside them, right? Um, um, the obvious Silinx example here is the Versal architecture in which, well, Silinx is an FPGA company, right? So it has uh, an FPGA fabric and also has, uh, which is called the programmable logic part, and also has a uh, a processing system part, or PS part, which is the, the part that I work on, it, it, that, that runs Linux. It has an A72, uh, Cortex A72 processor, which is the application processing unit, and that runs Linux. And it has a real-time processing unit on R5 on R that can run an RTOS on it, along with a microlase, for example. Uh, and, well, the reason for this, I, when I was in grad school, I had this professor of uh, computer architecture, and, and he was like uh, explaining to us like uh, pipelining or hyper-threading or something, and then after explaining, he would ask us, what's the right answer for this? And then the answer is almost all the time, it's, it depends. Like, there's no single answer for your problem. There's, uh, so for some application, Linux is fine. For some other application, uh, an RTOS is fine. You might need like deterministic behavior or something. And for some other application, you can use bare metal. So there's no one single uh, answer that's gonna solve all your problems. Um, and yeah, I mean, in, in the embedded space, we have this, right? Like we can, uh, even on this device, you can run different things depending on what you want. You can run Linux and an RTOS you can just run an RTOS, you can run, run Linux and a bare metal application, you can just run bare metal. And the problem comes here where they all use different workflows and it becomes really hard to uh, get everyone together and, 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 and be able to develop this in, a, in an easier manner. <clears throat> so for Artis and the Octa project, the, I, um, the, the point that I'm gonna prove today, or that I'm trying to prove today, uh, is that you can do this. And I used uh, the QMU ARM B5 uh, machine. When I started this, it was QMU ARM, but it was, uh, it's, it was moved now to QMU ARM B5, which is a versatile 926, I think, uh, BSP, and that's already on OE no core. That's the reason why I'm using that. Um, now, the other thing, when, if you look at the free artists documentation, um, you're gonna realize that what you need to build an application for this, it's the Armour Embedded Toolchain, and they, they just say, just go and download it from somewhere. 
And once you like get the toolchain, you you look at it and, and what's in it. So uh, you got the GNUC compiler, you got Bing Utils, GDV, and you got Newlyf. And I think the first three components we're pretty much all familiar with them. And the last one we all may not. So I'm going to put uh, explain what they say on the web page. It says Newlyf is a C library intended for use on embedded systems. It is a conglomeration of several library parts, all under free software licenses that make them easily usable on embedded products. And if you translate that to English, it means that it's a very bare bones uh, C library that it's meant to be used on, on either a bare metal application or an RTOS. Um, so that's what's on the DRM embedded toolchain, right? So <clears throat> uh, some of the previous work that I'm not going to focus on, the, on, on this presentation is what it's actually getting uh, new live and lib gloss recipes and the wiring, this DC libc new live wiring that happened on open embedded core to achieve this. Uh, it's just worth mentioning. And by the way, new live is the C library part and lib gloss is the BSP part. Uh, in, in, a, in a very high level, newlib contains a lot of uh, weak symbols, which allows the program to link. And then on the libgloss part of the, re of the application, you override whatever hard, depending on the hardware you have. Um, and then the, the other part is like creating the actual layer, right? So uh, MetaFreeArtos is the, the name of the layer. I, I had to create a distro for it. Um, the, the problem comes here where in, in Linux, uh, you have an OS and you have applications on top of it, but in an RTOS, the RTOS itself is the application. So that's that's where things become a little uh, confusing. And then also, I try to abstract the concept of the OS, the VSP for that uh, kernel, for the Fiatus kernel, and what the application part of it is. And to to achieve this, I use a class, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. And lately, I'm sorry, lastly, uh, what I wanted was to be able to run automated tests on an RTOS uh, application using the open embedded testing infrastructure because that was already there. That's being used every single day on the auto builder for Linux, and there's no reason why, can't that, why that can't be used to test something else. So first, the distro. Um, the distro, that is a distro that comes. It's not very complicated. It's, it's, it's pretty much a placeholder. Uh, that's just the name of the distro. And then the important part there is the TC libc uh, variable that it specifies the build system that is gonna, we're going to use new lib as a C library. Uh, on, on a normal, normal distro, like on Pocky or something, you would see uh, either like muscle or glibc in, in, in that part. Let's see the time. OK. Um, <clears throat> so then this is the class, the, the FreeRTOS app class. And the idea here is that be able to provide a single class that recipes can uh, inherit. It makes it easy to, uh, for different applications to be developed in this, in this uh, manner, right? Um, the, I declare some variables here. The first one is the first FreeRTOS version, which is 10.2.1, which at least until the beginning of this month was the latest. Uh, SRC URI is where it's going to get the source code. And as you can see, there's only two there. One, it's coming directly from Amazon uh, FreeRTOS Get, which is the, uh, the, the official one. And the other one is coming from my, my GitHub, because I, that's where I get the BSP part of it. And then I just, these are just the checksums. There's nothing funny there. Um, here's when things get a little. Uh, Interesting because now that I got the BSP separated from the, the I, I got the kernels, right? And now I have a VSP or a port of FreeRTOS that I want to use. And that, got, that gets downloaded from a different repo. And basically, I have to copy it to the kernel code so it, it knows about it, right? It knows it's going to build that application. Um, I do have to declare some variables here so the make files know where the code uh, resides and stuff like that. And then I do create some tags for it uh, to make it uh, make bit big things that is building an actual Linux image, basically. So for example, I need a do image task that does nothing, but I need it to exist. Um, part of the class as well, 
is the uh, QMU wiring that uh, allows us to run, uh, use the same infrastructure, as I said, uh, from Open Embedded to run QMU for a different operating system. So in this, uh, in this case, basically, I'm saying I'm, I'm going to use QMU system ARM. And uh, my architecture is going to be uh, versatile PV. That's, that's the interesting part of it. I'm, I'm going to use a binary as, a, as my kernel. And as I explained here, this whole next part is necessary to create the wiring uh, for QMU. Uh, uh, if you look at your, your deploy directory, once you build a, a Linux image, you, you end up with uh, your image and then a file that uh, uh, en ends with QMU bootconf. And it contains the configuration that run QMU knows how it's going to run it. Right? So this part is necessary for that. And while this might seem a little convoluted, the idea is that no one has to look at this. The class, you should just inherit it and then focus on your application. Right? So how does a recipe actually look like? And this is a recipe for an application. This is the complete recipe. So it inherits the class. So you don't have to take care of all the QMU stuff and anything like that. And then I have two uh, source, sources here. One is that, well, in the class, I have the kernel, right? So I, I get the kernel now from Amazon. I get the BSP from somewhere else, the port for um, versatile 926. And then here, I'm, I have the application code, only the application code. And uh, I just have a small patch for the make file to use new live. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the application that I used, I, I, I got it from an open source project uh, which had a port for the ARM 926 EGS. And I added some extra functionality to it. To, uh, so what, whatever you find on this repo, it's this, plus some extra functionality to uh, use the Task Notify API from uh, free artists to uh, wake up a task. There's, there's two recipes on the layer right now. One is where you get the... Um, source code for the application from a Git repo. So this is called, this is actually freeartos demo underscore Git. And then the other one is freeartos demo dash local. So the local, the application code itself, it's locally on the file system. And it looks like this. Um, it, these are all the files that are necessary, and that's only the part of the application. It doesn't, it doesn't have the uh, freeartos kernel, it doesn't have the BSP, the port, nothing like that. It's just the application, right? And that, that's the whole recipe. It's, 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 it's simple. Um, this is what the tree of the whole, I think this ran out of battery. Uh, this is what the tree of the whole layer looks like. And as you can see, it's this, those are the, are the files that I just showed you, the two recipes, and the distro conf there. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a demo of how this works. And I, I thought it's, it was better to use a video. Uh, not, not that it wouldn't run, but uh, I wanted to, uh, I want to uh, stop at some point that I think they're interesting. So I have three videos. Hopefully, you can see it, right? Uh, so first of all, this is just a clone of Pokey. That's it. I just did clone, git clone, uh, and then the Pokey repo along with the meta free artos, uh layer. So that's very basic. Um, after that, I source my environment, just like as you would normally do. I'm going to show you what my config, my local.conf looks like. And it has, I'm going to pause it there. So it has a machine, which I, like I said, this is for QME RMB5 for testing. Uh, the distro name, which is the file it's going to use uh, that I just showed you before. And then, since I'm going to be running automated tests, as you would with Linux as well, you inherit the class test image, and then you, I created a test suite for FreeRTOS, which it, obviously it's not the same as Linux. So that's, that's where you decide what to test. For your application, you would have to write your own test. I just, that's just zooming in to, so you can see it. Um, also there, just FYI, I already, like this, this is going to be built from uh, SD cache, so it was faster. I just didn't want to have to type all this and, and, and lose time on, on that. So, so there I am going to build the local demo, right? I call Bitbig FreeRTOS demo local. 
He parses the recipes. Um, I'm going to pause it there for a second. Uh, so you can see here uh, in the target says, it says that it's building the EAVI, which is the embedded uh, tool chain for uh, ARM in this case. And again, the distro name is there and stuff like that. So I'm going to let it build. It's, it's quite fast because it's from Estate. And this has way less dependencies than Linux, so it builds way faster anyway. Um, so it runs all the tasks for, for the recipe. And at the end, that's it. I it just built it. I if I do ls on my deploy directory, I see that I just built uh, a binary, an L file, a manifest that's needed for the test cases, and uh, like I mentioned, the qmu boot.com file, which is necessary for run qmu to understand what it's going to run. So the next step is. Just as after you build uh, a Linux image, if you want to test it, you just type run QMU. And I just built free Artas, and I'm just going to type run QMU, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I paused it. And I'm going to pause it again there. So there you can see the, uh, the full command that, uh, that QMU is using. Uh, again, you can see, for example, the machine that's using is Versatile PV. 128 megabytes and stuff like that. Everything, all this stuff, it's taken care of uh, on the class. And then it starts running the actual application. So free art to sample application, that's where it starts. And then it says the text may be entered using a keyboard and will be displayed then, uh, when enter is pressed. And then I have a periodic task that runs every 10 seconds. I have another task that is just called task one and it runs every one or two seconds, I don't remember. And then uh, I have another task that it's blocked. And I have to type something, and whenever I type, type something, that task will get unblocked. So that here, task one ran, and then the other task got blocked. Task one ran again, and then I typed A, and it unblocked the task that was uh, uh, blocked before. So you receive a notification, it unblocked the task, and then it blocked again. So it's waiting for something else, and I type B, same thing happened. Task one keeps running, and then I type ELC 2019. I unblock the task again, and then it over and over again, right? Uh, and then I think, yeah, the period, it's been more than 10 seconds, so the periodic task that was supposed to run after 10 seconds runs again. Deterministic behavior. Um, so there, I just exit run QMU, just normally as you would. And <clears throat> the next part of this is. Um, now I want to have this run. I developed my application. I want it to run uh, automated tests on it, and I want to make sure if something broke. Someone broke the code, and I, I, this is important for me. And I can run it every day or whenever you want to, right, it, on your CI. So the way it works on, 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 on Yocto is that uh, you call bitbake and then the image name, and then you call dash c test image. That's, that's, and then you decide the test suites that I just showed you before. And that's how it tests. Uh, that's how te Linux is tested for all the different applications. In this case, it's going to test the free Artos one. Again, um, oh, there's. This is going to be building a bit more uh, dependencies because test image ac actually requires a, a bit more uh, extra dependencies. And then it's going to run the test image application, and it's going to run it for 15 seconds. So it's at 11. I don't know if you can see it, but it says 11 seconds there. And then I put some warnings there that are not necessary. I just wanted it to be yellow. Uh, basically, it says the test passed. Uh, and it was a very simple test. I'm not here to tell you how to write your test. Uh, but basically, I just counted the amount of periodic tasks that happened in 15 seconds. And that, to me, at least I asserted that it it's still working. It ran the program, and it's still working. I'm checking the output of QMU, and it's still working. And then I get a result, and it says a test passed. And you get a summary exactly the same as you would with Linux. OK, video number one. Now, if I go to the next one. OK, so the second video is, I hope everyone gets this. It's a joke. Uh, I, I modified the. Um, the local version of the source code 
just to show you that you can easily modify just the application code. Uh, and everyone's familiar with knock-knock jokes, right? Okay, hopefully. Uh, I can't take credit for this. I just Google like programming jokes and it came up and it, it seemed fitting. Um, anyway, so there I am just showing you that I am I modified a couple files in the actually just modified main.c and receive that C. Uh, I can't show you the changes because otherwise the joke would not make sense. Uh, but anyway, I just modified two files. And then when I'm gonna after modifying the files, I am gonna run Bitbig again and rebuild the application, which obviously doesn't have to rebuild the tool chain or anything like that, it's just the application. It's really fast, so I, yeah. It's, it's, it, it unpacked it again and it uh, built it, right? So I have my new uh, built FreeRTOS application there. And when I run QMU, Okay, so again, knock, knock, and then who's there, right? Who's there? Java, okay. Don't take it personally, it just seemed fitting. Uh, the point is that you can modify your application, it's still gonna work with the BSP, right? Uh, and then, how am I on time? Okay. So after that, so the, the one build, I, I can move again, uh, the one build to rule them all. So how can we achieve this actually? Because um, right now I just show you that I built free artists, but I just built free artists and that's it. Uh, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit on how does this gets all wired in. So, so for a device like, I'm gonna go way back. So for a device like this that has multiple architectures and that has multiple OSs or applications or something, um, how can you just use one single build for and then get everything that you need for that? So this is where multi-config multi builds come into place. This is taken from the mega manual of uh, the Yocto project. And it says you can use a single build command to build multiple images or packages for different targets where each image or package requires a different configuration, multi -config multiple configuration builds. And that's just the hierarchy, the file system hierarchy of what you need. Usually you have your build directory, you have your conf folder, and a local.conf. If you want to use multi-config, you just add a multi-config directory and add uh, whatever multi-configs multi you want. In the, in the case of the manual, it's using an x86 conf and an ARM conf. And where it gets a little more complicated is the, is the multi-config dependencies part. So um, I'm not gonna read that because there's a lot of text in there. But the point is that um, let's say if you want to build, for some reason, let's say you want to build your Linux and your Linux depends for some reason on your free RTOS, uh, this is the way to achieve it, right? And the syntax is a little convoluted, but once you get used to it, it's, it's not that bad. The idea is here, for example, on the last line, it says, uh, do image, the bar flag is MC depends, MC, which stands for multi-config, and then x86, arm, core image minimal, do root of s. So I'm gonna translate you that, what that means. That means that the task, do root of s, for, from the core image minimal recipe, from the arm config, is depending on the task, do image, from the x86 config. So I'm building an x86 and an ARM, uh, different configs, and the, if I do uh, bit bay core image minimal for the x86, the ARM one is gonna be built as well. That's just the example that's on the uh, documentation. So how can we build Linux and free RTOS? And uh, don't get me, um, I don't wanna um, uh, confuse people, this multi-config builds, they don't have to be for different operating systems. They can be for anything. They're literally just a conf. You could be building the same architecture. You could be building, let's say you want to build, uh, for the same architecture, you want to build two different distros. Or the same distro, and one distro you wanted to use a sysv in it, and the other one wants to use a, a systemd, right? That, that's what they're for. In, in this case, I'm just taking advantage of that to use, to be able to build two different operating systems at the same time. And
<clears throat> so again, I just cd into Pokey, whatever, when I clone it, I source my environment, and I, I have a specific multi-config environment there that I have. And then if I, I'm going to look at what my local.conf looks like, and the important part here is this uh, BB multi-config variable, which declares, uh, it tells BitBake what am I going to parse. In this case, I named my multi-config file arm dash -fiartos. And then I created what I just explained to you before on the dependencies. I said the do image task from the freeartos demo recipe will de from the arm freeartos uh, config will depend on the do image task from the default config. Please look at this. Uh, there's nothing here. There's, it's, it's an empty string. That means it's the default config, the, the one coming from local.conf. So if I do ls conf multi config, I'll have a file, like I said, that's named the same as what I declare in this variable, arm free artos. And then if I look at that file, what it contains, it says it has the machine that I'm going to be building that for, the distro that I'm going to be using, and the temp directory that's going to be used for that. So it's, there's there's three lines on that config. That's it. And now. There's the, I'm I'm explaining there that there's uh, I'm using I'm gonna build the default config the one for local.conf so I say bitbeck mc and then colon and then lo nothing which means the default one and then after that I'm gonna say core image minimal so what's gonna happen there technically it's I'm asking just to build core image minimal for local.conf but since I have this uh, dependency there, it should build both of them at the same time. I paused it. So uh, here is the interesting thing. Here's where the 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 configs are shown of what you're building. On on one side, on, on the, the local log conf one, I'm I'm building QMU x86 64. I'm building the distro pokey and on master, and that's it, right? And on the second one, I'm, I'm building um, the, QMR, the QMR and B5 and the ARM uh, config for the free Artos one. So those two configs I'm building, and it's going to be really hard to pause at the right time here, but... Okay, so that, 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 that's, that does it. Uh, that's enough for me. So here is the run queue of the tasks that are running, usually. And as you can see here, I never put anything about ARM when I try type bit big. I just said core image minimal for the default one. And in the run queue here, I have two tasks. One is running for the local.conf, which is core image minimal. And the second one, it says MC ARM free Artos, free Artos demo. So it automatically started building the other config because of that dependency. And once it runs, yeah, it, it, it keeps running uh, both both configs. Obviously, I did this on, on, on shared state, so it's really fast. <clears throat> it creates a Linux image. And there you go. So now um, I'm going to look at the deploy directories. And if I look in the deploy there, I can see I just built an image for uh, QMU x86-64, normal core image minimal, no changes. And then if I look at the deploy directory that I, that I defined for free Artos, I can see that I also built a newly uh, free Artos binary at the same time. Now, uh, here's things would get a little bit confusing because I just built two different configs and what if I type run QMU, what's gonna happen? Well, I think it's uh, a little obvious it's going to take the one from local.conf. So if I just type run QMU, it's going to run Linux and the, the core image minimal that I just built. And it works just fine. I think I let it boot there. You can do it. There we go. So it, I, I'm going to get a login prompt there. I built that. And then I exit run QMU. But also, the, the QMU wiring that I keep saying and saying and saying is that you can pass that as an argument to run QMU. And if I pass that as an argument to run QMU, 
uh, the, the QMB bootcamp from the free artists one, it's able to run that as well. You see now, like I just run run QMU for different OSs in like three seconds. Okay, I think that proves my point. Now, what time is it? Okay. Um, so future work, there's there's some um, multi-config optimizations that I have to do. Um, uh, some of them are sharing uh, the estate cache between multi-configs, which is going to be a lot easier now with uh, the changes that happened in CS, which was uh, just released uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week. And then there's uh, parsing optimizations as well. Um, there could be more ports or more architecture supported or BSPs, whatever you want to call it, on the layer, on the meta free layer. And I'm sure there's some fine tuning on the layer that has to happen. But I just haven't gotten to that point because I don't have more ports. When you get more ports, you test it and you realize, oh, I'm missing this, this part or, or this other part. And I also have to upstream some of the test uh, infrastructure for FreeRTO so it, so it knows how to test it on, on Open Embedded Core. And yeah, I mean, the takeaways from this presentation is that the Octa project and Bitbig specifically uh, provides scalability. I think a lot of people complain on how it's complicated to to use at the beginning, but I think it's it might be a con, but the pro is that it provides scalability and it allows you to do some kind of thing like this. Um, Free Artists was just used as a test case. It's just what I found. It could be anything. You could run a bare metal application, you could run Zephyr, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Um, so we could technically support more OSs or application open embedded. It, that's a question that I'm not going to answer right now. Uh, and the idea here is that unify workflows across teams within a company. And everyone, if everyone's using the same thing, uh, you can, for example, produce, this can produce an SDK. And you have control over the tool chain that everyone is using, and that gives you reproducibility, right? So whenever you, someone, hopefully not a customer, but someone finds a bug, and it comes to you, you know exactly what they're using. Because otherwise, they might be using some different tool chain or some different flag, and it, it becomes really like way more complicated. Uh, so this is my last slide. And I'm going to run it. Okay. I mistyped tanks, but. Thank you, guys. I, I just ran the free Artos application. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for attending. Uh, does anyone have any questions? We have like three minutes. Yes. Uh, you could. Yeah, actually, uh, you could. It, it depends, obviously, on the device. But technically, the, the, the binary, the Freeartos image that gets built actually gets an RPM. So you can technically install it on the root file system of Linux. And then you can flash the other uh, memory or whatever in, in your own way. So it's possible. I have not had time to try any other ports yet, but it should be the idea here is to abstract that, right? And to have to make it easy to get ports uh, there, M0, RIS5. It should not be that complicated to do. The, so the wiring, what I wanted to provide was the wiring there, and adding more ports to it should not be at least not as complicated as it would be in, on other occasions. Well, the, each multi-config uses its own cross-compiler. Uh, uh, cross, uh, so it, it, it doesn't interfere with one another. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it like the the fact that he, uh, the the TC Leaps in New Live is there the wiring it would make it work now. I'm actually going to take a look at Metasephir uh, and 
and but it should not be complicated. Yocto is able to provide you a tool chain with, and it's just a tool chain. It's, just, it's not, well, it, it's not easy, but it's still not rocket science. Uh, so yeah, does anyone, yeah. Can I, yeah, I will, I will share the slides. I just, I was just having problems with the video because I could, they wouldn't let me upload it, but yeah, they're, I'm gonna upload them. Sure. Uh, not immediate plans, but it's it's kind of the it would be a nice uh, road to take. Like it would be it would simplify things, right? Uh, we just need to port it to the different architectures. R five in this case. Well, the th yeah, in the, in that case, that there would not be necessary because the tool chain you would get the tool chain from here, and it could. It could, yes. I think we're out of time. Uh, so thank you guys for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.